Alrighty, my friends, welcome to another video here. This is going to be a real quick one, no introduction or anything like that, because I'm just kind of hanging out on my bed right now. It doesn't look very professional. Um, I was just basically updating the watch list for tomorrow. Well, re-updating the watch list for tomorrow, because I had already posted the watch list for tomorrow, but now a bunch of stuff popped off um, with the Middle East. There was somebody bombed somebody. You know how it goes. You never know really who does anything. They just say it, and we got to believe it. Uh, but it's just all politics. So somebody bombed an oil thing, something relating, I don't know what it was exactly. Something, somebody bombed something in Saudi Arabia, long story short. And I came to obviously update the market because when that happened, oil reacted. And because of that, now that leads me to believe that the market is going to react. And as you can see here, here comes the spy already giving us a big gap down. Um, so I basically went to kind of give a little update to the watch list about that and I realized you know what let me do a quick little what you would call it little video here a little trade recap just for the sake of it because somebody had asked me the other day uh, to make a video going over a trade that I did while trading shares because like I say I don't post everything on Twitter I don't post everything on YouTube and I still don't, I don't even post everything on Instagram but I do that's where I post the majority of the things so I had been posting my profits there sometimes and I, they would see that I was trading shares and some people were getting bent out of shape as if, like, it's me. I'm breaking the law by trading shares. Um, and, oh, my God, you're breaking your trading shares. Well, I'm like, well, relax. And you can do whatever you want in the market. Uh, and then other people were just curious. And somebody asked me to make a video on it the other day. So might as well just make a video. Uh, they were right. I don't have any videos on YouTube of me doing a shares trade. So, hey, here's one for you guys. Um, it's going to be real quick. I also, it's going to kind of just touch base on the idea of, uh, like, raising stops and lowering stops. Like a trailing stop and things like that if you will, that I mentioned in the last video, um, and that's pretty much that. So before I start rambling about politics and what could be going on in the world in the Middle East, I traded BABA on Friday. Now, I don't, I know I don't trade on Fridays, but to kind of in my defense, the reason that I don't trade on Fridays has to do with options-related things, and because I'm primarily an options trader, that's why I have the rule that says don't trade on Fridays. So, that, that that's another reason why I traded shares. There's multiple reasons why I'm trading shares. Uh, the main reason actually to kind of put that out there before everyone else starts getting bent out of shape is that I'm trying now don't hold me to it either. I don't want anyone sending me emails talking about, Oh, Hey, when is this coming out? Or when is that coming out? Cause there's no promises. I'm not promising anything. And it's not like I promised anything, but you guys know me. I'm the kind of person that loves to over deliver. Um, I want to remake some of the videos for my uh, master class that I have, the master course, the video lesson course that I have. And I want to basically, not like remake all of them, but update some of them. And I also want to add to it by adding a section of showing people how to trade shares because some people don't want to trade options. They want to learn how to trade shares. And at the same time, I do claim that the course will teach you everything you need to know about the markets. And while it does teach you everything you need to know, there aren't many videos of me doing shares trades. There's me teaching about shares, and I have live trades there as well where I'll do like a recording of my trade, and I'll go in and I'll talk about, yeah, this is what's happening, blah, blah, blah. As the trade is happening, you know, that way can people, people can kind of get the experience of being there live with me as well. And I realized I don't have any of those with shares. So I said, let me make some with shares. So that's the reason why I've been trading shares along with a few other reasons. Um... So I'm going to be updating, long story short, I'm trying to update the master course, and then once it updates, it's also going to go up in price. Uh, don't worry, for those of you that already have the course, you don't have to pay anything, whatever you already locked in at, you're going to get the updated videos. But this is why I'm saying, don't hold me to it. Don't. I don't want anyone emailing me saying, hey, when are those updated videos coming out? Because I never said that I was going to update them. You get what I'm trying to say? Uh, I mean, the, the whole course can go 10 years without being updated, and everything will still be applied. Uh, but you guys know me, I just like to over deliver. I always like to surprise people like, hey, for example, the live videos that are in the course weren't there at the beginning of the course. And I still had tons of positive feedback on the course. But one random day, I just decided, you know what, let me give them some live videos. How about that? So uh, that's just how I am. So that's why I've been trading shares just to kind of put that to rest. Um, now I shorted Baba, which in order to short, you need to be on a margin account. And if you day trade on a margin account with less than, or not even, if you just day trade on a margin account, you get flagged as a pattern day trader. Now, if you have more than $25,000 in your account, it won't be an issue. 
So you might see that my account shows flagged as a pattern day trader, but it's just because I am on a margin account because you need to be on a margin account to short shares. Now on my options trading account, I have that account set up differently so that I can day trade as much as I want with less than $25,000 and not get flagged as a pattern day trader. Um, but you can't short shares like that, which is, an, is not an issue to me because you just get puts. It's the same thing and it's actually a lot safer. But like I said, I wanted to make some videos for the people that got my course to, you know, shorting shares and all that, basically shares trading and, you know, you need to have a margin account to trade shares. So I'm just putting all that out there right now. So now that I can kind of rambled a little bit about, you know, everything, let's jump into this now. Um, like I said, I traded Baba on Friday and I also traded Baba. I shorted it as well on, um, Thursday as well. I'll show that and let's do it like this. Cause I don't like showing so many trades in one. Um, we'll come back to this actually. How about this? We'll come back to this. Let's just look at Friday's trade. That, that's, that does it. So shorting shares is basically the act of borrowing the shares from your broker. This is why you need a margin account because you need to be able to borrow the shares. So you're borrowing the shares from your broker, selling them to the market. So you're basically selling something you don't own. With hopes that the value of the stock goes down so that you can buy it back. So if you're selling something for $100 and you want the stock to go down to 90, you're going to buy it back for 90. You sold it for 100 and you're buying it back for 90. Now this might confuse some people, but that's what shorting is. Most people think that you can only make money when the stock goes up. They think you can only buy low, sell high. Well, they didn't know that you can also sell high, then buy low to cover the trade. So I sold the shares that I did not own. So I owe my broker 500 shares. As the value of the stock went down, I bought back the shares and I kept the difference. So for example, I borrowed it at $100, sold it at $100, it went down to 95, and then I bought it back at 95 and I kept that $5 difference. Just in case anybody isn't familiar with shorting, for the beginners out there, I like to keep my things beginner friendly here. So I shorted basically 500 shares at 179.98. Let's just say 180 for the sake of it. This trade was also on the watch list as well. I don't want anyone getting all bent out of shape. Um, so that, that's, that was there. Um, and it's exactly how I said it in the watch list too. I said, I'm looking to get in only if we get to the 180 area. Um, yeah, so 500 shares. Now, I just want to show you guys why there really is no reason to trade shares when you know how to trade options. 500 shares means I would have basically had to have had, it, it, it equates to the value of, do 500 times $180 each. That's $90,000, guys. That's a lot of money. Not everyone has $90,000. You get what I'm saying? So that's why you trade options. Now, options and stocks, it's the same thing. They're all in the same market, but options are a lot harder to do when you don't know how to do them. Now imagine, role play with me here. This video is going to end up being a lot longer than I wanted it to, but it's okay. You guys are going to learn from it, hopefully. If not, at least you guys get to hear me ramble. You get to learn something new. I'm sure you're going to learn something new here. So imagine if you turn 18 years, 16 years old, however old you are when you first learn how to drive. If the first car you learn how to drive or the first car you get is a stick shift manual transmission car, it's not really going to be that much harder to learn than a regular car because you're still learning either way. You got to learn how to drive. So if your first car that you learn how to drive is a stick shift car, yeah, it might be a little bit more, take a little bit more time, maybe a little bit more focus. If, I mean, honestly, it really wouldn't if you go in it with the right mindset. If you go in it thinking, oh yeah, it's going to be hard. Maybe it might be a little harder. But I mean, if you're going in it like, yeah, it's a stick shift car. Woo, let's go. I'm a speed racer. You want to do it. It's not going to be any harder to learn than an automatic transmission car. You get what I'm trying to say? Also trying to let you guys know that a lot of it has to do with your mind. It's all in your head. Um, so your first car that you learn how to drive is a stick shift car. Let's say you go out and you're like 22 years old, 23 years old. You go out to drink with your friends and you realize your friend that was supposed to be the designated driver is now drinking. And you realize, oh no, I don't want to die. So I'll stop drinking and I will drive our car home. I'll drive. I'll be the designated driver. End of the night comes, you go and you get in your friend's car 
and you look down and you see, oh, he has an automatic transmission car. I'm not used to automatic. I, I only know manual transmission. Are you going to have an issue? No, you're not going to have an issue. Not at all. Now let's flip the script again. Your first car that you got was an automatic transmission car. You've never driven a manual transmission car. You go out to drink with your friends. Your friend is the designated driver. You realize they're being stupid and drinking and they're going to drive you home. So you realize, uh-oh, I'm going to be smart. I'm not going to drink so I can drive us home. You know, I don't want to die. I have a future ahead of myself. I'm learning how to trade stocks. I'm about to better my life. You get what I'm trying to say? So you're responsible. You stop drinking. You go and you hop in your friend's car and you look down and you see, uh-oh, it's a manual transmission car. Well, you screwed. What are you going to do? You think your friend at two in the morning right there is going to be able to teach you how to drive manual transmission while he's drunk or she's drunk? No. Come on now. But if your first car was a manual transmission car, are you going to have any issues? No, not at all. That's why I teach my students options first. The first thing in my course is teaching them about options. Then we get into teaching them about how to understand the charts and how the stocks move up and down and when to get in and when to get out and the strategies this and the time frames that everything like that comes after because it's like that idea of basically a manual transmission car is your first car that you're going to learn how to drive that way automatic will be no issue in the future but if you're if first you learn on automatic you're going to have issues in the future learning manual or it's going to be harder or it's, you're going to have to learn something new so that's how stock trading is. If you can trade options, no problem you can trade shares. But just because you can trade shares doesn't mean you can trade option, options. You see what I'm saying? I have, I'd probably say the majority, no, I'd say at least half of the students that I have are people that already trade shares successfully, but they just want to learn how to trade options because I could have done this same trade. This trade was about a $500 profit. Thursday's trade was about an $800 profit. Both of them required the same amount of capital. They were both 500 shares. But if I did it with options, I could have done it with like $1 or $2,000 instead of the cost of the trade being $90,000. So again, just putting all these ideas out there, showing the differences to you guys. So I shorted it at 8 a.m., pretty much exactly at 8, at 180, we'll say. As the value of the stock went down, I bought the shares back. I don't know why it broke it up like this. Same here. It's all at the same time. It just sometimes it breaks it up like that. It's. I think it might be because I use limit orders, which, I mean, again, it doesn't make a big deal. It doesn't make a big difference because they all went through at the same second. Uh, let me see here. So yeah, that's that's 200 right there. It, that's 100 right there and then 100. So that's 200. First, I sold 200 at 1217. Then at 1254, I sold the rest of the 300 that I had. Now, there's two reasons that I sold the rest of the 200 that I had. One, it kind of hit my stop. But two, I refuse. I refuse, I refuse, I refuse to ever hold a short position overnight with shares. That's also the main reason why I trade options now is that my biggest loss in my entire trading career, it's probably been over five years now. What year are we in? 29. Oh my God, it's been five years. Guys, I'm getting old. Wow. Man, I've been almost trading for 10 years almost too. This is crazy, guys. I'm getting old. Okay, so um, my students know about my Chipotle trade, but anyways, uh, it was a short. I didn't respect my plan. For example, on this Baba trade, I told myself I'll get out at a certain point. If it goes above a certain point, I will get out. It was I, I, I just it was stupidity on my behalf, and I've learned my lesson. And I mean, the market taught me my lesson at that point. It was an expensive lesson, and this is why I say you need to learn. Take a course, my course. You'll take my course. You'll learn that lesson. Oh my goodness, for a fraction of the cost of what it cost me. But my biggest loss came from swing trading a short position. So now I will never, ever, ever trade a short position overnight with shares. I'll trade puts overnight because your risk is limited. There is unlimited risk when you are shorting shares. So I will not short it. I won't trade it overnight. If I held it overnight, we're, we're going to gap down. I mean, it probably would have been another, like it probably would have been like $2,000 profit. I mean, you can look at the market. The whole market's going to gap down. The market reflects before these individual stocks do. Um, yeah, market's going to die. But this is because of the Saudi Arabia stuff that's going to go on, and it's obviously going to drag everything else down with it, and then we're going to see how it treats the thing in the morning. We don't we don't trade the news, right? We, we trade the reaction to the news. I don't want anyone getting all bent out of shape already thinking, oh, this, oh, that. Um, so 
let's jump into the rest of the trade here. 180, I shorted it at 8 right here. Let me put on the one minute for you guys. Now, there's various reasons why I shorted it, but... I mean, obviously, one, I had planned it. That was the plan from the watch list, dead on. I said, we're in it at 180. Uh, we had a risk. We had a reward. I mean, that's what the watch list is. I tell you, all right, we're keeping an eye on this. If this does this, then we're going to do that. It's very simple, actually. You know, If it doesn't do that, then we don't do that. So the idea was if we get to 180. Now, it was Friday, and I'm trying not to trade Fridays. But long story short, I mean, I just had to at this point. It's like, dude, come on. The supply and the demand, we're at an area in which the demand drops and the supply increases. And you can tell there's nothing happening. Nobody's getting excited about it. The market isn't even strong. So I almost like had to. I'm like, all right, dude, you don't trade Friday. Just do it with shares. Do it with shares. And that's what I did. I mean, like, I had to almost. It's like, dude, it's slapping me in the face. It's like literally like it's like it gave me another opportunity. How could I have not? So anyways, that was that. So I got in the trade, and I put a, a tight, tight stop on it. I had a tight stop at um, it was 180.61, I believe, or 180.57. I don't remember exactly. Um, and I use these random numbers. And for anyone that's subscribed to the watch list, in case you're ever wondering about why I use these random numbers, is because these stocks and things, usually they understand numbers. They understand that people are like, uh-oh, I'll get out if it goes below 38. So they drop it right below 38 just a little bit. They know that people will say, oh, I'll get out if it goes above 180.50. So I pop it up a little bit. For example, on Thursday was the same thing. Look at it. Hit the 180.50. If I had my stop at the 180.50, I would have top ticked it. Meaning it would have pissed me off. I would have been mad because it would have hit me right there and it would have gotten me for a loss and it would have done exactly what I wanted it to. So that's why and again, you just got to have a cushion. Well, anyways, don't worry about that. I don't want to get all sidetracked with that, but I just wanted to point that out in case you're subscribed to my watch list and you ever wonder, why why does this guy use random numbers? That's, that's part of the reason why. Um... Same thing here, 29.75. On my watch list, I usually say 0.76. Anyways, um, so you guys are learning something here. It's going to be a 20-minute video, but you're learning. You're learning. All right, so this is where I got in it. I had my risk. Let's just say the risk was 180.60. I'm pretty sure it was 0.57. Um, it was either 0.57 or 0.61. Um, could have even been 181, to be honest, and it would have still been risk to reward wise, would have been logical. But my risk would have been, you can calculate it as well alongside me, basically 60 cents. And my reward, my main, main reward was going to be the 178.50, which again, you see, I should have put it a little bit higher just in case. Um, but I didn't because I'm, I'm, I was a little biased against this stock too. I also know you know, sometimes you got a feeling, a little gut feeling. You can tell, all right, dude, we're at that key area. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't get above it. If it does, it's going to take some time, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, I, I was a little biased to it as well. Um, market was weak, everything. I was like, all right, maybe we might be able to break it, blah, 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 blah. So 500 shares times 60 cents, that's a $300 loss that I would have taken. Now, if I got my full exit at the 178.50, that would have been a dollar fifty profit. So sixty cents for a dollar fifty profit. A dollar fifty times five hundred. Uh, well, I should be able to do that in my head. I don't know why I can't. It's like two fifty plus five hundred. Yeah, seven fifty. I calculated it anyways. Um, seven fifty would have been the profit. So I was risking three hundred dollars to make seven hundred and fifty. Now. Once we went and we got to the 79 area, I dropped my stop, meaning it was now at 180. Meaning if we went above 180, I'm out. Meaning I would have broken even at worst case scenario. Then as we got to this area and I realized, man, I missed it. It didn't hit my area and it reversed. That's where I closed out. I tried to close out like half the trade as you could, you saw there. At 1217. See, 1217 is like right here.
I realized we're probably going to give a nice little bounce here. That's where I got out. About half of the trade. I closed 200 shares. And I was still holding 300. Now, at this point, I had dropped my stop again. Now to the 179, I put a random number, like 57, obviously. But let's just say 179.50. So meaning if it went above the 179.50, I would have gotten out. It would have automatically taken it for me. Automatically, it would have done it. But if that happened, it wouldn't have mattered. I would have still been in a profit. Because I got in at 180. Closed half at 179.50. The other half I closed, let's say, like 178.75. So my average would have been like 179.25. So it would have been a 75 cent profit still. Now, it's a little harder to calculate and a lot more to keep track of when I'm explaining it with shares. But you guys are still going to be able to keep track of it. It'll still all make sense here. Um, so I raised it to the 179.50. Now, unfortunately, towards the end of the day... It, it wasn't getting more, it wasn't dropping more as I would have wanted it to. I was hoping we would have flushed out into the end. Obviously, it didn't. And at the same time, it never hit my stop either. It never went above that 179, whatever I had it at. But, like I said, I refuse. If it was puts and I had enough time on it, I would have probably done it. I would have probably held it overnight. But I refuse to hold a short position overnight. So that's why I closed it out right there as well. It's like, all right, well, you know what? Screw it. Be done with it. Now, if you want to do the math, we can take an average. Uh, we sold 200 at 178.78. So 200 times 178.78 is 35,000. Oh man, I don't want to do it like this. 35,000. I'm going to just write it right here. Hopefully it lets me put numbers. 35,756. Then I sold another 300. If I closed exactly half of the position, I would have just been able to do the average of these numbers, but I want to get you guys the exact price because there's always going to be somewhere out there that's going to be like, oh my God, no scams, scams, he's lying. It was actually a five cents different. So I want to give you guys the actual number. And then another 300 shares I sold at 179.14. which is $53,742. So I'm going to add this 35,756 to that, which is 89,498. So we're going to divide that by 500 and that's going to tell us our average price. The average price is 178.99. I got in at 180. Let's just say 180 to 179. You get what I'm trying to say? That's a $1 profit. I had 500 shares. That's how it was a $500 profit. You get what I'm saying? So that's mainly the one that I wanted to go over here for you guys, just to kind of show you guys a little share trade, if you will. Um, and that's pretty much that. You could have done the same exact trade. I mean, with less than $2,000. I mean, my goodness, you could have done it with $1,000 and made the same profit. Less if you did a current week expiry, but I teach you guys not to do that. Um, it's not safe. Don't do it. And as a matter of fact, you probably wouldn't have even made money because of the time decay if you were trading a current week expiry, which is why I say don't trade on Fridays. Anyways, enough of that. Enough of my rambling. Um, and then again, just, just, just because I had mentioned it, not like we really need to go over it, but I mentioned the Thursday trade as well. So let me just go over it before someone's like, oh, scams, scams. Here's Thursday. I shorted 500 shares at 180. Again, it's the same idea. Um, had the same stop. And I had uh, my first profit target was the 178.50. And then I was trying to hold some to see if we can get 177.50. Again, lowering my stops. Taking some profit. If you are if you subscribe to the watch list, you know exactly what I'm referring to where I say you could hold some playing with profits or you can lower your stops. So let's look at this one real quick. I'm just going to breeze through this one here. Okay, here we have it. I was in the trade at 726 or 728. Which is right here. My goodness, dude. I'm, I'm just getting, I, not bragging, guys. I'm not bragging, but I'm just getting so much better at my trading, looking at, like, just reflecting back on years ago. Like, I'm just looking at all my trades, and I'm like, dang, dude, you are, 
like I get that close sometimes to the top. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm honestly impressed with myself. Somebody, the reason I say this is because somebody sent me an email like about a week ago, commenting on that. Like they were like impressed because they were part of the watch list, and I was just thinking like I was letting him know like I wasn't like this always, you know. And it comes with the experience and the knowledge, and you know what I mean. So I'm just commenting and rambling again. So, anyways, this is where I got in the trade. Uh, literally the 180 area, and I had my risk. My stop on this one was 180.77. 180.77, which would have been 500 shares times 77. Um, I mean, here, we'll do the math. 500 times 77. 0.77, sorry. Would have been $385 loss. My main profit target was 178.50. So... That's a dollar fifty. It was a, a, basically a two to one ratio. It was, I was risking, you know, I would have made seven hundred and fifty, or I would have lost like three three eighty five. You get what I'm trying to say? Two to one right there. So, as we dropped, I sold half of the trade. This one I can do an easy. All right, the average of this. Look at the average price that I got out at was one seventy eight point sixty. Two, we'll just say. I'll round that up for you guys, just so nobody's like, oh, scam, scams. Plus 178.19. You divide that by two, that gives you 178.40. So as a matter of fact, I got the, the two to one, more than two to one. That's why I said it was about an $800 profit here. I had 500 shares. I was in it at 180.01. And then I got out at an average of 178.40. So what is that? That's a dollar sixty-two. A dollar sixty-two times five hundred. That's eight hundred and ten dollar profit. So that was an eight hundred and ten dollar profit on the same trade, same shares amount, same everything on Thursday, and then another five hundred dollars on it on Friday. Um, and that's that. And I had a little bit of a tighter stop on it on Friday too, because obviously, you know, you, that's that's how we trade. You learn, you know how to use your levels and all that. Um, so, man, this is gonna be a thirty minute video. I hope somebody's still watching. If not, it's all right. Um, yeah. And, and the reason why it's taken, I, I actually did want to make a video on this trade on Friday, but I've just been so busy and just haven't had time. So I'm doing it now. Again, this is why I try to say, like, you know, I'm not gonna be making too many trading videos on YouTube as much. Um, just because, you know, I don't have the time to like exactly jump to it and all that. You know, it's not like my, I have a million subscribers and everything. You guys get what I'm trying to say. So anyways, um, that was the trade. You saw the average. Let me just point it out on the, on the thing for you guys and we'll go from there. So 754, I got out at basically 178.61, 10 cents shy of the 178.50 at 754. Right here. And the reason I did it is just because and this comes from my options trading habits. The, the I guess you can say the volatility and the, the premium, the momentum that this would have from dropping so much would have given me a little bit more of a profit than just the dollar move, the dollar per dollar move. If you, for options, people that know what I'm saying. Um, so, and I like to close my trades in... Um, what do you call it? Like if I'm trading puts, I like to close it out while it's still going down. If I'm in calls, I like to close it out while it's still going up. I don't like to wait for it to reverse. If you, I explained that in the course. You guys know what I'm talking about there. So this is where I basically got out at right here in this little area. And I, I guess I kind of got a little teased out as well. I saw one of my little reversal indicators there. Um, and that was pretty much that. That's where I got out half of the trade. So I'm still holding half of the position size. And then I dropped my stop. I lowered my stop. I dropped it to 179.76. So that means even if it went up and I closed out the rest of it, I would have still been in a profit. Because I got in at 180. I closed out half here. It would have still been a profit, even if it went against me. And obviously, it never went and hit my stop. And I also never got to hit the, as a matter of fact, right here, it hit the 177.50, but it was too fast, way too quick. I wasn't able to catch that. And I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't put my, my automatic level there because I was there watching it. I was there in person watching it, um, with the other Baba one on Friday, I wasn't watching it. I was just letting it sit. So that's why I would, I had that, those levels just sitting there and everything. 
Um, but anyways, so it hit that, but it was too fast. That was my secondary profit target was the 177.50. So I was waiting. I lowered my stop. was going to wait to see if we got it again. I Obviously, we didn't get it. It never hit my stop, and it never went below it, but notice what time I closed it out. 12.55 at 178.19. I mean, we were still lower than where I closed this other one out. It was like right around here. That's right where I closed it out at. Right before it reversed again into the close. And again, mainly because I refused to hold a short share position overnight. The only reason, the mainly only reason I'm trading shares, like I say, is because I'm trying to get some content for the uh, master course people out. So anyways, that's pretty much that, guys. We're going to wrap it up here. I'm going to just, yeah, not even going to say the whole subscribe to this, subscribe to that. You guys know the deal. Just make sure you're following me on Instagram, who's Bijan T, and Twitter and all that. And make sure you visit our website. I put the link in the description below. And I will talk to you all soon. Hopefully somebody was still watching this. Comment something below if you were. Just anything randomly. Just let me know you're here. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, I figured I'm going to hop back here to my options trading account real quick because there's always going to be somebody that's out now and he's probably losing a ton of money on his options. He was trading options on the other account. Blah, blah, blah. You know how people get. So just real quick, I'm going to show you guys that no trades this week on the options account. You see what I'm Because I was on my shares account. You see what I'm trying to say? And this also goes to show you can't trade a million things at once, guys. People always think, oh my God, no, he's not showing this. He's not showing that. I'm like, dude, how much do you guys think I'm trading a million things a day? I mean, my goodness, go and watch my history, my tactics. I'm not the type of person that trades 10 things in one day and two, three, three things in one day usually. You get what I'm trying to say? It's hard to keep track of, especially day trading. Um, usually, if anything, if I'm trading multiple things at once, I might be swing trading some things on one account and then day trading on the other. But anyway, so see, nothing here. And then what? Let's see. We take it back all the way until where are we here? Here, there's the trades from last week. This was the trades that I did on the last video, as a matter of fact. And then I didn't do a video on this Facebook one from Thursday because, like I said, I don't make videos on every single trade that I do. I don't I don't think I even posted it on Instagram. Uh, but it was a $1,300 profit there on Thursday, last Thursday. And then there was no trades on Friday. And then this week I was trading on the shares account. Um, so just putting that out there for you guys. And then, you know, take a look at this Facebook one. You can see I got puts. I had 20 of them in 12 minutes. 650 out at 702 20 contracts 20 contracts 390 times 20 you know how options works 390 times 20 that's 7800 then i sold them 12 minutes later for 455 so 455 times 20 is 9100 subtract the 7800 that's $1,300 profit. Or you could just look at it like this and you say, okay, 4.55 minus 3.90. Oh, that's, what is that? Let me do it the other way around. 455 minus 390. That's 65 times 20, 1,300. So there's that for you guys. That was Thursday. And then there was nothing last Friday because like I said, I don't trade Fridays, especially when I try and trade options. I wanted to stay disciplined because I wanted that week to be all green. You get what I'm trying to say? I, I did a video on that. You guys have the trades from all that week. I wanted it all to be green. And you see one trade a day is all it takes. One there on Goldman, one there on QQQ, one there on Facebook. You get what I'm saying, guys? So what was the other one before that? I don't even remember. People will email me saying, oh, why'd you get into this? Why'd you get into that? And I'm like, I don't know, guy. Like, you expect me to remember this? Where are we at here? Is it not show? Did I not do anything that day? Wow, I, I did. There we go. Goldman. Or no, I guess I didn't do anything that day. I don't know, guys. You know, my, I, like I said, there you go. See, my memory, it's terrible. I, don't even, I can't even keep track of what I did. Uh, but anyways, so that's pretty much that. That was... Tuesday, that w oh yeah, the market was closed on Friday, or on, on Monday, that's why, yeah, I didn't trade that day, because the market was closed, yeah, duh, it was uh, Labor Day, something like that, um, so yeah, Golden Sachs, QQQ, Facebook, that was that, I mean, that's a decent amount of money for that week, I don't know how much it was, probably around like three, 4,000 just that week, maybe, I don't know, right, I don't want to calculate right now, uh, I think it's 2,500 was those two trades, if I remember from the first video, 2,500 plus 1,300. Yeah, 3,800. Like I said, 3,000 or $4,000 that week. Um, anyway, so that's that, guys. I don't want to make this video too long for you guys. Someone's causing a ruckus outside. Anyways, so wrap it up here, and I will talk to you all soon.